My name is, I should have said this first, my name's Rowan. I um backwards day today. I'm in Copenhagen um, and I support uh, teachers heading to Australia from all corners of the world, but mainly UK, Ireland and Europe. We've had teams in 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 North America as well and, and uh, Canada, uh, sorry, New Zealand. Uh, I love what I do. I'm, I'm, I'm wrapped to hear um, all the travel stories that our educators share. Um, I'm I'm really privileged to be able to work with such a great team in in Luke in Melbourne and, and Darren over in the dub, in WA, um, a qualified migration specialist. So without further ado, I'm going to hand ball over to Darren to introduce himself. I'm going to flick through the next slide because I had a slide prepared. Um, sorry, just before I do, and I am a teacher as well. So I've taught in I've taught in multiple countries: Australia, UK, Sweden. Um, I know what it's like to relocate. To a different country, you know, to a different hemisphere. I know the questions, the concerns, the anxieties that some of you might have out there. Um, but hopefully, um, if, they, if they don't get answered tonight, um, the team are always here to to talk through things that don't get spoken about tonight, like bank accounts and uh, tax file numbers and finding accommodation, all that kind of fluffy stuff. But tonight is just, or today is just about the visa side of things. Um, I'm really looking forward to it, and I'm I'm sure you are too. Darren, do you want to talk a bit about yourself? Yeah, thank you, Ron. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining the webinar, and a special thanks to Rowan and Luke for having Sue and myself as guest presenters, although Sue is missing in action at the moment, so hopefully uh, she'll be joining us very shortly. Uh, I've been a registered migration agent for more than 20 years. Uh, I'm licensed by the Australian Government to give immigration advice and support, and my MARA number is 02 211214. Sue, when she joins us, is our senior case processor. She works in the London office and she's an expert with the Australian Institute for Teaching and School Leadership, commonly known as AIT, AITSL, for all the skills assessment. Sue has successfully processed hundreds of skills assessments for teachers and she'll be here to answer any questions that you have in regards to the skills assessment. Like Rowan said, it's encouraging to see educators joining us from all over the world. We've got people from Fiji, Ireland, Netherlands, Brazil, Philippines, Kenya, and lots more. So today I'm going to be talking about uh, or giving the explanation of the visa options that you have, temporary and permanent. And as I said earlier, Sue will answer any questions you have about the skills assessment. And later on in the presentation, Luke and Rowan are going to discuss some fantastic opportunities for sponsorship uh, in Melbourne and the Victoria area. OK, so let's run on to uh, the visa options that uh, are available to everyone. Do you want to just give Luke um, an intro maybe first and then we'll we'll do that? Maybe. Yes, Darren, sorry. sorry, Luke, didn't mean to yeah, cut you right. out there, mate. No, no, that's all right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, a, little, a quick little uh, bit of uh, info about me. Um, I, I was also a, a primary school teacher before, um, yeah, getting into recruitment and helping other educators out there. Um, so I, yeah, uh, taught only in Melbourne, didn't have the exciting uh, CV that Ro did. But um, yeah, uh, I help educators here in um, in our Melbourne office uh, where I am at the moment. Um, and I guess in Melbourne, I look after educators that are, you know, special ed uh, or design tech subjects, and but regionally in Victoria, I look after math science as well, and I guess a broad range of other areas that schools might have requirements with. Um, and just recently, now, uh, yeah, supporting educators internationally um, through obviously independent schools that we work with, but uh, primarily now through the Department of Education sponsorship initiative. So it's a, a very exciting time to, um, yeah, be supporting educators. Uh, abroad. Okay, thanks Luke. Rightio, so let's get into some of the visa options that uh, you'll all be interested in moving into Australia. Uh, the first one is the 12-month working holiday visa. Now this is eligible for passport holders from the UK, Ireland, Canada, Netherlands, Brazil and many others. Just go onto the Australian Government website, uh, IMI dot homeaffairs.gov.au and just see if your country is listed under the 417 or the 462 and if it is that's an option for you to spend 12 months in in Australia. Option two is the skilled visas we've got the 189 and the 190 that is more of a visa for those looking to move to Australia on a permanent basis. We'll also be discussing the employee sponsored 
um, 482 visa. We're not going to talk about the 186 or the 491, but mainly the 482 because Luke has got some fantastic opportunities uh, for, for teachers in around the Melbourne, Victoria area. And that's where an Australian uh, employer offers you a job on a temporary basis to work up to a period of four years. There are some educators out there who have turned 45, but still under 55, and your only real option there of getting permanent residency is uh, if we can find a, a school who's approved under the Dharma Agreement and has, has an age exemption, then that's an option to you for as well. Okay, so let's get into the, the working holiday visa. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, so... Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry you jump a slide yeah. there on your own. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Right, so the working holiday visa. Oh, sorry, Mike, there should be the next slide, please. After that one. Visa options. Have I got the, I might actually have the wrong presentation, have I? Actually, I think you have, mate. You've got the old one. Have you got the new one with the... I'm going to, yeah, I'm just going to... Um, with bring Kimber, that up. yeah. I, I apologise. Let me reboot this. Uh, so, can you see that? Yeah, I can. Yeah, Just go to go. the first, if you go back to the first slide, there should be four of yep. us. Yeah, there you go. Sue's there as well. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Thanks, Ryan. That's better, mate. No worries. Sorry about that. You're throwing me a curveball there, mate. Yeah, my bad. I apologise. <laughs> right, yeah. All right, so the work and holiday visa. Oh. Here we go. Here yeah. we go. The 12 month working holiday visa is designed for overseas travellers to do short term work in Australia and to help pay for your holiday. You can study up to four months and travel in and out of Australia as many times as you like during that 12 month period. You have the option to extend the visa for a further 12 months once you've completed three months of specified rural work. You must hold a passport from an eligible country, be aged 18 to 30, or for some countries like Ireland and Italy, you can be up to 35 years of age, and you must apply from outside of Australia and not be accompanied by dependent children. So that's a great option for a lot of uh, educators to get into Australia and you can use that as a stepping stone visa. So next on to the employee sponsored, which Luke's got some great opportunities for you and Ryan later on. This visa here is the 482 enables you to work in Australia for a period of up to four years. You can study, you can travel to and from Australia as many times as you like during the validity of that visa, but you must be nominated to work as an educated on the skilled occupations list, so a secondary school teacher or a primary school teacher, um, by a, a business or a school already in Australia. To be eligible for this visa, you must have at least two years relevant work experience and a minimum standard of English language proficiency and only work for that employer as a teacher. You can include your family within this visa as well, and they also receive, this, receive the same work rights as you. So this is also a good one for those people looking to go to Australia with a job in place. And just on to the next slide, which is the skilled visa. So the skilled visa is more of a permanent visa. So if you're looking to move to Australia um, permanently, this is perfect for you. The 189 and the 190 are the best options available. With these visas, you can stay in Australia permanently, work and study in Australia, enrol, enrol in Australia's public healthcare system, Medicare. You can include your family in your family unit group. You can sponsor relatives later on to come to Australia. You can travel in and out of Australia for up to five years. And after spending four years in Australia, you can apply to be an Australian citizen. You can be in Australia or outside of Australia when you apply for this visa and when it is granted. To be eligible for this visa, you must have a positive skills assessment for the Australian Institute for Teaching and School Leadership, commonly known as AITSL. You must be under 45 years of age, have competent English language, and score a minimum of 65 points. You will also need to have full medicals and chest x-rays, criminal checks, and be invited to apply for this visa from the Australian government. So how much does the skilled visa cost? Okay, 
The fees for applying for a skilled visa are paid in stages, so you don't have to pay them all up front. With the skilled visa, I would recommend booking sitting the English test first, and this is at a cost of around 395 Australian dollars. If you achieve the marks necessary for the skills assessment with AITSL, then you can move on to the next stage. If you don't get the marks, you can always sit the test again and try and achieve those marks. The skills assessment with AITSL is the next step and costs $1,050 Australian dollars. Once you have the English test and a positive skills assessment, you can then lodge an expression of interest, which is called an EOI, with the Australian government through their website, which I said earlier, which is imi.homeaffairs.gov.au. The Australian government will look at all the EOIs lodged and then offer invitations to apply. Invitation rounds usually happen every two to three months, or they have been a bit sporadic at the moment with a huge demand. The Australian government um, in December issued 35,000 invites um, to people. So that's a huge amount of invites, um, whereas we usually only see anywhere between five to seven. So once you get an invite, you can apply for the visa. And this is when the big key the big fees kick in. The Australian government for the main applicant charge 4,240 Australian dollars. If you have a partner, the partner is 2,120. And for every child under 18 years of age, it's $1,060. Once the application is being lodged, you then proceed to complete your medicals and your x-rays. For everyone over the age of 18, you also required to provide a police certificate for every country that you've lived in for longer than 12 months in the last 10 years. And once your visa is granted and your points are confirmed and your medicals are checked and clearances cleared, um, your visa is granted and then you have 12 months to enter Australia to activate your visa. And when you activate your visa, then you've got five years to come and go live in Australia, come back to where you come from, tidy up your affairs, but then you've got that guarantee of living in Australia for the next five years. Just gonna let some, some more people have just jumped in, so I'm just gonna make sure they can join join us. So just to follow sure, no up. Um, I think that's everyone. Yep, okay. Excellent. Okay, so we've just got some uh, examples here uh, for a secondary school teacher from the United Kingdom or Ireland. So teachers coming from there have a lot of options. Um, one of the options is the 12 month working holiday visa. And whilst inside or out of Australia on that particular visa, you have the option of applying for the employee sponsored 482 or the permanent 1899 190 visa. So the working holiday visa is a really good visa to get into Australia, maybe start some work through Ange UK with an employer, but then you've got the option to use that as a stepping stone onto a 482 or the permanent visa. So they are the three options for people coming from those particular areas. Um, and it just depends on what you need and whether you have children or whether you're looking to go quickly whether you're looking to go temporary or permanent, whether you want a job, or you prefer the freedom of the skilled visa. So someone here had a question from, uh, from Fiji or South Africa. So passport holders from Fiji and South Africa and other certain countries are not included as one of the countries eligible for the 12 month working holiday visa. So this leaves the two options. It leaves you the temporary employee sponsored 482 visa, and you can also look at the permanent 189 and 190 visa. Once again, it depends on your circumstances as to which visa option you choose, either temporary or permanent before you leave and head to Australia. So here's a question from Teresa from Nigeria. Um, how do you get into Australia? Yeah, well, look, when you're applying for a temporary skill shortage 482 visa, um, the primary applicant is required to demonstrate that they meet a certain standard of English. Once again, if you come from a country that you can't get onto the working holiday visa, I would recommend completing the IELTS general English test first. 
And for the 482 sponsored visa, you need an overall band of at least five with a score of at least five in each of the test components. And that is writing, reading, listening and speaking. So that's the requirement for the 482. The other requirement would be evidence of at least two years work experience as a teacher. Once you've got the English test and the two years experience, I would then speak to Luke from ANS UK and see what employment sponsorship options are available uh, through them. So Luke, does ANS UK have any sponsorships available just now for teachers looking to come out for the employee sponsored visa? Yeah, absolutely. So through the uh, sponsorship initiative at the moment, um, that there are over 120 jobs currently um, through that sponsorship initiative, which is across uh, multiple methods. So, you know, your maths, your science, your English, um, you know, special ed and so forth. Excellent. Fantastic. So there's certainly some jobs out there for those teachers looking to come out with a job on the 482 and work in Australia for four years. So, so fantastic. That's great. OK. So when a teacher is bringing his or her family halfway across the world and wanting to stay in Australia permanently, I always recommend the skilled visa. The reason for this is that it is a five year permanent residency visa, which enables free schooling for your children. It gives you access to the Australian healthcare system, Medicare. Furthermore, you're not tied to an employer as you would be with the 482 visa. Yes, this visa costs more, than the others and it takes a lot longer to process, but this is the most secure option for families migrating to Australia. With teachers receiving priority processing from the Australian government at the moment and the points requirement at their lowest for five years, in December, secondary school teachers was receiving invites on 65 points, which is the lowest I have seen it for a long time. It is a very good time for teachers to be looking to migrate to Australia. So there's plenty of jobs, and not only that, if you're looking at the skilled visa, the points are the lowest they've ever been, and you're getting priority processing. And that means you could probably see a skilled visa processed within six to eight months, where it used to be well over a year. So it's good news for teachers. Fantastic news. I've got some more people. Sorry, I've got to let them in. Um, yeah, sure. It's fantastic news. So what, if it's not priority processing, like, is it is it an extra cost for priority pro processing, Darren? And what would normal processing times be? No, well, the good news is teachers and health professionals have been uh, targeted by the Australian government of having huge demand and requirements. Uh, there's so many jobs for, for, for educators and in the health industry that the Australian government is pulling those particular applications out of the system first rather than all the others it doesn't cost anymore and you get priority processing like i said it's probably if you're an educator you could have a skilled visa within six months um, everything going really well so if you're an accountant um, or you're an electrician you could be looking anywhere between a year to 14 months because you're not getting that priority processing yep and you and the partner of the educator that gets that visa they have working rights as well in australia yeah, exactly. They get exactly the same work rights. So if your partner, I don't know, is is a midwife or or a um, sales and marketing executive, they can go work for whoever they want for as many hours as they want, or they can just go lay on the beach and take the kids surfing and do whatever they want. It's, yeah, yeah, fantastic. Lovely. Rightio. So what we've got here, we've got a Sheikah from Fiji, do I need to do an English test? Well, yeah, look, if you're looking to get a visa and come to Australia, um, depending on the country of your passport, Fiji, definitely, yes, you're required to do the English language test for a visa. So if applying for a skilled visa, which is the permanent one, you must have a positive skills assessment through AITSL. And for that, their requirement for English is a score of seven out of nine in writing and reading and eight out of nine in listing in speaking and it has to be the academic IELTS not the general so that's for the skills assessment however if you're from the UK or an English speaking country if you've studied for four years at degree level or higher including your initial teacher education qualification and you gain these qualifications Australia Canada Ireland New Zealand UK USA you do not need to do the IELTS academic test you automatically will get those uh, marks without having to do that test 
for the employer sponsored visa. So if Luke finds you a great job in Victoria and you're heading out to uh, Australia from Fiji, the English requirement is an overall score of at least five with the score of at least five in each of the test components. And once again, it's writing, reading, listening and speaking. The minimum score for the skilled category is six out of nine in all four areas of the IELTS general English test. So when you're doing the skills assessment as a teacher, you've got to do the academic. When you're claiming points for English for the skilled visa, you only have to do the general. So sometimes I've had a teacher who um, has got the marks for the skills assessment with AITSL, which is eight, eight, seven and seven, but they want to get 20 points. They can then go do the general test, which is a little bit easier and try and get the eight, eight, eight for the 20 points for the visa. So it's quite an important difference between the two. Passport holders from English speaking countries like the UK and Ireland automatically receive a score of six out of nine in all four areas for visa purposes only. Just, um, I've got a couple of questions here. I know Luke, you've answered one already through the chat. And just a reminder, if you want to ask questions, there's the chat function here. Um, what would be what would be the citizenship options or pathway from a 482, Darren, if someone wanted to go for that? Yeah, well, look, if you're working in Australia on a 482 and you're a secondary school teacher, after three years, that employer then has the option to sponsor you under the 186 which is the permanent residency employee sponsored option. So that's a great option. That's a good option because after spending three years with the same employer, you don't need to do the skills assessment or the English language test. You can just go straight in and do the 186 PR. You may not want to spend the three years with that employer for whatever reason. Then you can look at the skilled visa and then you can look at a 189 or a 190 state sponsored visa. And that means you would have to do your skills assessment and your English language test, but then you're independent of the employer. So you're not relying on them sponsoring you, and then you have more options um, as an independent visa holder. So that would be the two options uh, to get PR coming off the back of a 482. So it's pretty, you can change visa status whilst you're in the country quite easily. Yeah, look, a lot of, I think there's a slide later on where uh, someone from the UK said, oh, look, how many visas can I apply for? You can hold multiple visas. Um, mm. I have people go in on a working holiday visa. They then apply for a 482 visa employee sponsored. The 482 cancels the working holiday. They work on the 482 for two years and then they go, I want a PR. So then I'm going to apply for a 189 skilled independent visa, which then cancels the 48. 482 and they get permanent residency. So they've held three visas and applied from virtually all the same time within a, a three or a four year period. So yeah, right. that's why the working holiday is a very good one if you can get it. You can yeah. get you into Australia, get you in front of an employer uh, and say, hey, I'm here, you know, I, I want to work. I've got a visa. Try me out if you like me, sponsor me and then off we go. So it's good for the employer and also for, uh, for people coming to Australia on that visa. Okay, so Sue hasn't been able to join us. I don't know what's happened to Sue, but um, she usually talks about the qualifications because she's obviously the expert in it. I do a little bit of it, so I'm happy to have a chat to you about that. So look, qualifications, um, yeah. So for AITSL, if you're applying for a skilled visa, this is a requirement and you have to have um, a minimum of four years, full-time high education at university level study that results in a qualification. This must include a relevant initial education qualification and include, and it can also include other qualifications. So for example, uh, someone from the UK, uh, this consists of a three year full-time undergraduate degree, say in geography, and then followed by a one year full time initial teaching qualification, you know, like a, a post grad diploma or a PGCE post grad certificate in education that gives you four years and you've got your initial teacher training, you get a positive skills assessment. Yep. So what we often do find is we've had a few teachers coming out to Australia and and Luke and that you've referred them back to us. They've had a three year bachelor of education. Um, that's fine, they can still work, 
um, and live in Australia on a 482 employee sponsored. But when they go to get their skills assessed for the permanent visa, they're not going to be eligible for the skills assessment. So you need to be careful and probably get your qualifications checked before you come to Australia if you're looking to stay permanent to make sure you can get that skills assessment from AITSL. Um, okay. Secondary school teacher looking to locate? Yeah. So, Mark, thanks for the question. Um, if you're looking to go on a temporary visa, then the 12 month working holiday visa 417 is fantastic, or even the employee sponsored 482. Uh, the 417 is restricted to six months with one employer, employer usually, although at the moment uh, the Australian government has waived that, and I think that's uh, due to change in July. Um, but normally you can only work with one employer for six months. Um, and on the 482, you have to work with the same employer, depending on how long they sponsor you, but that can be up to four years. If you're wanting to stay permanently in Australia, then the skilled 189 visa is really the best option. This visa allows you to live and work any in Australia, anywhere in Australia for any employer, and also in any occupation. Um, that's the weird one is you can migrate to Australia on a skilled visa and then have a career change and go be an accountant or or go surfing like I do and lay on the beach and do, do that uh, more often than the weekend. So yeah, so as long as you get into Australia on that visa, you can you can uh, you can change. Rightio. So I've got another question here from Sean. Yeah, this is what I was talking about earlier on. This, this is a really good option uh, for those people that can get the working holiday. So you can apply for two visas at the same time. So, for example, you can apply for a 12 month working holiday visa, travel out to Australia. Whilst you're in Australia, you can apply for the skilled independent visa. So this way you can be in Australia traveling, working, having a fantastic time. Sorry, Darren, are you there? Luke, can you hear me? No, I can't hear Darren. He's going quiet on mine as well. Let me just see. Darren, I don't know what's going on there. Darren, we can't hear you for some reason. I'm not sure why. I haven't muted you. No, we can't hear you. Um... I wonder what, what has happened. Um, Could be his mic internally. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what's happened. Uh, what we might do, I don't know if you want to try and jump back into the presentation, Darren. That might be the best way to do it. Um, and we can come back to to Darren and maybe Luke, you, we, yeah. we can kick off with some of your slides. So yeah, um, which ones do we want to start on for you? Uh, um, just on um, slide 18. Yep, here. Is that yep. sharing? Yeah, yep. good. Fantastic. All good. Um, yep, so whilst um, Darren gets his audio um, sorted, um, obviously, Dar any questions around Visa? Um, Darren's knowledge is, is far greater than mine, um, being visa migration is, is his area. So I apologies. Um, I know there's a few questions on the uh, on the chat that are, have still been unanswered and they are around visa. So I'm sure we'll get to those at the end. Um, I'm going to be chatting about uh, essentially the sponsorship uh, opportunities in Australia. Uh, I'm going to lean particularly to Victoria, um, although there are op uh, opportunities elsewhere across Australia, but um, I'm going to be talking about more the, the two options uh, essentially that uh, we have at the moment. So sponsorship in Australia, obviously there's there's two pathways, particularly in Victoria, one being independent schools or the other being department schools, particularly through this um, DET sponsorship initiative. So through the independent schools, um, a, a lot of these, I guess, opportunities um, you do it's it's more likely to I guess be considered for these roles if you are in Australia um, particularly because a lot of these schools um, you know, like to see the educator um, face to face and so so forth in the past a lot of the educators that we've had that have come through uh, sponsorship and in independent schools have 
in the past have been on working holiday visas. Um, that's just what we've experienced previously. Um, and yeah, as mentioned before, they prefer to meet and employ in person. Um, so yeah, okay, if, you, if you're currently overseas at the moment, um, it can make it a little bit challenging, but some, some schools potentially are open to, to virtual interviews, um, but they'd love to see the educator face-to-face. -face. So that's where this DET initiative or the um, Department of Education sponsorship initiative really changed the game in, in an amazing way. Uh, and that's simply because these schools are able to employ whilst you're still overseas uh, and, and the department will obviously support you with your, your skilled uh, visa. Uh, which is obviously um, you know, a huge, um, you know, uh, I guess, benefit. Uh, we might go to the next slide, Rowan. Yep, yep. Um, so I guess I'm going to talk about the, the success stories in both avenues. So I've got one school in particular. It's called Bacchus Marsh Grammar, uh, an independent school here in Melbourne. Uh, so they're, I guess, in the, the western suburbs of Melbourne, not quite in the Melbourne metro area, but not quite uh, regional either. Um, and a lot being an independent school, the types of jobs that they need a lot of help with are and, and are willing to employ uh, and it, it, I guess sponsors that educators that require sponsorship are your harder to fill jobs. So, for example, you know, maybe your, your design tech, uh, uh, digital, digitech, so media, uh, food tech, woodwork, all that kind of stuff. Um, if you've got strong references as well, that's a, a big help um, and a bit of teaching experience behind you as well. Uh, and again, previously, for example, at Bacchus Marsh Grammar, within the last 12 months, we've um, placed about six or seven educators that have required sponsorship. Um, and that's just through us. Um, they've obviously employed a, a greater number outside of us as well. Um, but again, this is all because they've had that face-to-face -face chats. Um, you know, they maybe have been able to do a bit of CRT and some contract work as well. Uh, but again, not everyone's able to to come down straight away. Um, that's where again this Department of Education initiative comes into play. So it is a very new initiative, um, and it's we're moving through the very early stages of it. Uh, but essentially, within the last basically couple of months. Uh, we've already had um, a number of educators that have been successful and have already been given offers uh, to work at that school and are now going through the process of speaking to, you know, migration agent panel uh, and going through things like relocation. So still the very early stages, but also very, very exciting. Um, so these educators are still in their, you know, home country. Uh, to give you an example, we've had a couple of educators from South Africa um, and we've had also a couple from New Zealand as well. So um, it just makes it so much easier uh, for educators that are still in their home country and aren't able to, yeah, you know, pay for a, a visa and so forth. So essentially, and we'll go through the relocation support in a moment, but, you know, if you're going to hopefully get sponsorship from an independent school, you know, you, you're essentially, you're paying for your visa, uh, you're paying for your airfares as well. Uh, which for some people they're able to do that and that's fantastic and we can help you through that uh, in terms of, you know, getting you those interviews. Uh, but if, for example, you know, things like uh, the financial side might be a bit challenging through the DET sponsorship initiative, this all gets reimbursed. Uh, so, you know, your visa, uh, flights, sponsorship, obviously the school is the one that sponsors, but it all gets funded through the Department of Education as well. So they're able to help the school as well as the educator, which is um, yeah a huge, huge win for educators that are overseas. Uh, Ron, we'll go to the next slide. Just before we do, and I'm going to yep. link someone else who's trying to get in as well, but just yep. before um, we do, what type of roles are these DET schools um, you know, advertising or coming to yeah. ANZ UK asking about? Like, is it all types of roles or is it just a certain yeah. cohort of subjects? I'll actually be I'll be going through that in one of the slides um, oh, sorry, towards yep. that's all right no that's okay yep. uh, we'll, we'll definitely be going through that um, yep. but I guess before all that um, is I guess we'll go through the application process from the very beginning so the first thing that happens is essentially uh, we at ANZ UK will do an initial pre-screen uh, virtually like we're doing now on Teams uh, getting to know yourself the educator um, what your current experience is what schools you've been teaching at obviously 
who is coming with you. Um, you know, for example, if you're taking your family, if you're coming alone, um, and, and gathering documents as well. So this will include transcripts, um, you know, your degree qualifications, and then we can obviously hang on to that and get that pre-screened uh, as well uh, through the department. But um, essentially, we're just making sure that all of your qualifications um, align with um, yeah, the, the curriculum standards here, and that will obviously be making you eligible to teach. So that's something that we look at as well. Once that's done, um, we'll run some roles past you, um, you know, based on your teaching method. Uh, and we'll obviously talk about, you know, the regional areas or metro areas, whichever one you might be open to. Obviously, these roles span across both regional and metro Victoria. Uh, and once you've gotten back to us and said, yep, Luke, I'm really keen on these five, six, seven or eight roles, we'll put you forward to those. Um, and then fingers crossed, well, no fingers crossed needed because really a lot of the schools that we're working with are going to interviews. Um, so that's obviously, yeah, very, very good signs. During that time, you'd want to be getting your IELTS done uh, or your English proficiency testing done just so you're, you're getting ahead. Um, because obviously if a school does offer, you want to make sure that um, yeah, you're making the process, I guess, efficient for yourself as well. Uh, but yeah, we'll obviously provide some interview preparation as well. And we'll send a document to you, which helps for interview preparation. Um, and if you're successful in getting uh, an offer from a school um, and you obviously accept that offer, um, a migration agent um, will, well, your application will be sent to the DET to confirm your successful um, uh, offer. The migration agent from uh, the DET panel will reach out uh, to you directly and talk to you about visa and how that will work. Um, and then someone from the DET will also reach out to you about relocation support. Now, throughout that period of time, you'll obviously receive a letter of offer from the school as well. That can, it depends on the school, it might come before you've even spoken to the migration agent. It might be very a, a very quick process. Um, but essentially from start to finish in terms of how you know we screen you and so forth. That's generally how it looks. Um, in terms of a timeline, can't really give an example of how long that would take because we are still in the very early stages of, I guess, this process. But at the moment, we've got educators that have already received offers uh, and accepted those offers. So, well, I'm just checking to make sure. Um, doesn't look like Darren's been able to jump back in. Um, unfortunately, but just to clarify, the DET is only in Victoria. This initiative is only in Victoria. It's not in Sydney, right? No, it's only in Victoria at the moment. Um, and at this stage, it's running until about financial year, which is July. And then hopefully uh, it gets renewed over the next 12 months, fingers crossed. Um, so for example, if you're an educator that is looking to come down as soon as possible, um, we'll obviously help you with this process. And if you're successful for a role, more than likely, you'd be probably a term three start uh, because obviously you're going through that process with visa and so forth. Um, and obviously, yeah, where the department will obviously be able to support you. If you're more keen on something around maybe 2024, you can't move any sooner and it's probably looking more of a 2024 start. Hopefully this initiative does uh, roll over, but in the meantime, we'll still absolutely have a conversation and we'll pass you on to Darren directly just to discuss other opportunities as well uh, through some of our the other visas that would obviously lead you to the independent schools that we work with. Um, but uh, I'd like to hope that this uh, initiative will absolutely roll over, fingers crossed. Um, now, I'd like to talk about the relocation support. Um, basically, if you're coming on your own, uh, you have a, an allocated uh, amount of up to $10,000. Uh, this covers economy airfares. Uh, obviously, we can't fly, fly your first class. Uh, so it's economy airfares, uh, which is up to $3,000. Uh, international transportation with your personal items, up to $2,000. And then transport and accommodation, up to $500. And then once you're getting established here in Victoria, um, transportation of personal items, uh, home setup, and temporary uh, transportation support as well. Now, it's obviously always going to be case, um, you know, every person's circumstance will be very different, so it'll be case by case. Um, but if you're coming with a family or, you, you know, you bring your partner and your kids along, whatever it might be, um, it's up to $20,000. Uh, and again, 
some circumstances may vary for, for different families and for different situations. So the Department of Education will, will obviously have those conversations. Um, the big thing in is that you want to make sure that you're, you're holding on to all these receipts. So, um, you know, airline fares, uh, visas, IELTS, uh, VIT, which is the teacher registration here in Victoria, anything that has essentially helped you get here uh, and, and to get you into the country and obviously with your to get the qualifications as well, make sure you're holding on to those receipts because once you're here, the Department of Education will send you a form to complete and basically filling out all of the um, the, the costs that got you here and uh, the qualifications and so forth, and you get reimbursed for that. That's great. And families up to 20,000. Yeah, families up to 20,000, which is fantastic. Uh, now, yeah, uh, a question that Ro asked before, and, and I'm sure one that um, I guess educators in the chat are wanting to know about is, which roles are, I guess, in demand um, on this DET initiative? Predominantly, um, they are, I guess, your your mathematics, your science, English, humanities, and special educational needs, or SEN. Uh, and this is across both uh, metropolitan Melbourne and regional and rural Victoria. Now, I know there are some primary educators here in the chat as well. Um, there are primary roles, just not as many. Um, which makes it, uh, yeah, I understand a little bit more challenging if you are looking to teach primary. Um, the benefit is a lot of schools that do need a lot of support um, are your special ed schools uh, or SEN schools, and they will take educators um, that are either, as long as you've got your VIT, which is your Victorian teacher's registration, um, you do not necessarily have to have special ed quals, or, sorry, special ed qualifications to teach in those environments. Um, you can just be, yeah, have your VIT, be secondary or primary trained, and you are able to to teach in that space. Um, obviously, you know, if you've been in the classroom and you've um, taught students that have additional needs already, um, that's, I guess, extra experience that you can bring into the classroom and that you can speak about uh, in your interview as well. Um, but I guess, yeah, through this um, Department of Education and Initiative, those are what you can see on screen are predominantly the roles uh, that are available uh, predominantly. So if I was a if I was a primary teacher in, a, in another country right now outside yep. of Australia, and, and I've just heard what you said, yep. I, what would you say a call to action would be? Should I look at my CV and really flesh out all that special needs experience I've had or even look to get more experience in special needs so I can present to you and your team to say, hey, I love the sound of this DAT initiative. Mm. I need sponsorship. I'm a primary teacher. I've got special needs experience already, or I've got some fresh experience I'm doing right now. Can I please be considered for one of these SEN roles? Is that is that the best call to action? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you've got yeah. if you've got a strong CV uh, and you know you, you've taught at a few schools already, or maybe you you know you've taught for a you've got at least a, maybe a couple of years under your belt already. Um, you know that's obviously going to strengthen your chances. There's no doubt. Um, but I'd honestly say that a lot of these schools are, are very much to, you know, having these conversations with educators already. And if you've got, you know, great references as well, um, you know, that's going to be a, a big help to you. Um, but, you know, if you're passionate about what you're doing and a passionate educator, um, you know, there's, there's no reason why through this initiative in particular, um, you won't be definitely, yeah, absolutely, you'll be considered for an interview. Um, and yeah, there's no doubt that um, there'll be some options there. So absolutely fleshing out the CV um, as much as you can. We can also provide some CV examples. Uh, if there are educators out there that maybe want to see what does a good CV look like, what does it include? Uh, that's something we can also provide as well. Fantastic. Now, Darren is in it, but I just can't get, I'm trying to get his camera to work. I'm allowing it to work. And can Darren, you, you are on. I can now, yeah, sorry. Yeah, the camera's not. Um, I'm here just we go. louder. There you go. Yep. Yes, I'm back. <laughs> back. He was out Sorry about that. Me, out on the beach having a quick little dip. Yeah, right. I'm back. Sorry about that, everyone. I think no, I got right. through my PowerPoint presentation and all my points anyway. So I'm, I'm, yeah, I've, I've been listening to you, Luke, and that was great. So excellent. Thank you. What I'm Actually, doing is, I might. Sorry, Luke. No. Oh, sorry. Sorry, you go, Ro. I've got a heap of questions in the chat and Anne's been really good. She's been another team member of ours has been responding, which has been great, but I'll go back over the ones we haven't, but go on Luke. Sorry. I was just going to add one more thing um, just around. I know Darren has um, 
provide a lot of great information about, I guess, yeah, all of the requirements and so forth. And one of those was um, the uh, the AITSL or AITSL. Um, so with the with with this particular department um, sponsorship initiative, um, you won't need to worry uh, about the the AITSL uh, for this particular initiative. So the the departments, yeah, doing their very best to to remove as many barriers as as possible. Um, and that's one that's, um, yeah, through going through that skilled process and so forth, that's something you won't need to, to worry about. So one less cost, I guess. Absolutely. Um, so I'm just looking at some of the questions that haven't been answered, perhaps. Um, I think we've answered a lot, though, which is great. Um, lots of primary teachers are on the call, which is great, too. And Luke gave a really good explanation of what you guys can do around sponsorship. Um, Darren, do you know how long educators will be on the priority processing list? Is that like indefinite or is that is that got a time limit on it? Yeah, usually they do have uh, time limits on it. So I would imagine um, once the what usually happens is the industry would go to the Australian government so and say, hey, look, there's a huge shortage in our industry. So once the uh, that industry of teachers goes to the Australian government and says, look, now um, there's not so much demand, that's when it will probably get taken off the priority processing list. Um, I've just seen a huge increase um, and the amount of inquiries that we had from teachers and the amount of teachers that are applying for visas. If you are a teacher and you're thinking of getting to Australia, I would think about making the move soon because that priority processing will probably be around for another six months maybe a year, but if there's a flood of teachers coming in in the next year, then that'll that'll go. And then what will happen is those people looking for the skilled visa, it won't be at 65 points, it'll go to 70, 75, 80, 85, and then all of a sudden you may not have enough points to get that skilled visa. So very good time and opportunity to be a teacher and apply for a visa Australia right at this present time question here from Jessica in the States that I can actually answer. How does she get her US qualifications transferred to Australia? It's literally like what Darren and the guys said, as long as you have um, the minimum of four years combined teacher training and, and also a minimum of 45 days observed practicum, you'll be recognised as a Victorian Institute registered teacher or a New South Wales registered teacher. So as long as you, as long as you get the four years total university qualification inclusive of teacher training, and the practicum observed practicum of 45 plus days, you'll be recognised as a teacher in Australia. Um, that's pretty straightforward. The um, Just on that too, Ryan, just, just yeah. be careful with teachers from the US because we've had a few. It has to be recognised through a university. If it's done through a college or in-house school, then AITSL does not like that and you may not get a positive skills assessment. Same yeah. with teachers from the UK doing QTS not through a recognised university, you can come unstuck on the skills assessment. So look, if, if, if you're not sure, just send your quals through to, to Sue or myself and your CV, happy to check them out and give you a bit of advice on that. Yeah, good advice here. Yeah. Sorry, I, Jessica, if you are, sorry, I was thinking of a working holiday visa, if you're eligible for that 462 from the US under 30, you won't need the AITSL, you won't need all that, you'll just you'll get recognition. So. Um, what other questions have we got here? Luke's answered a few, Anne's answered a lot. Thank you so much. Um, uh, is the, here's one here um, from Jason, probably one for you, Darren. Is the requirement of having two years post-qualification experience a necessity for ret for retrieving um, visa 482 temporary skill shortage, or is the requirement flexible due to high demand for teachers? Could you apply for this visa with only one year's experience teaching? No, unfortunately not. It's a requirement of a 482 visa is to have the, the minimum of two years work experience. So if you're lucky enough to be eligible for a working holiday visa, you could scoot out to Australia on that and get your experience up in Australia, or you will have to get your experience before you come out. Or you can have the option of a permanent 189 and 190 because there's no work experience requirement on that visa. Fantastic. Actually, Sue is here. I just have to get her to. Um, I can get her to get video. Um, there's certainly no um, opportunities for teaching assistance around skilled visas, though, is there? 
Darren? No, so the occupation has to be on the skilled occupations list. So you'd have to be a qualified teacher, um, no assistance, unfortunately. No worries. That's, yeah, where are you, Sue? I'm trying to get you into the conversation here. I know you're there. Uh, see more. Here she is. I'll bring you in, Sue. Welcome to the party. You should be able to talk now, and I'm allowing your camera as well. Hopefully that is working. Um, and the other questions that, that just popped through then. Um, sh if I'm planning on moving in January 2024, should I apply for a visa now? Well, hi Sue, how you going? Hi guys, <laughs> I've been here the whole time. Sorry Sue. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, good to have you on board. Yeah, look, yeah. to answer that, to answer that question, um, if you're looking to come to Australia in January 2024 on a skilled visa, then yeah, apply now because it'll take, if you're a secondary school teacher, six to eight months to actually get the visa. And then once you've got the visa, you've got a year to activate it. So that's perfect. Get in and get the visa now, then you won't lose the opportunity of having that. Um, but if you're looking for a 482, have a conversation with Luke. Um, about employee sponsored or the working holiday visa. Once again, once you've got it, you've got a year to use it and it doesn't start until you enter Australia. So if it was me, I'd get in and get it for sure. Yep. Um, this, this, is, this is a question I thought would come up, Darren, around the free trade agreement between the UK. <laughs> when is this going to happen? Um, for everyone that and Darren can can attest to this, I hope, or I might be barking at the wrong tree, but still it hasn't come into play. The Australian Parliament have agreed on it. We're just waiting on the UK and then it should happen soon after that. But um, when it does happen, when it is official, you will not have to do the specified work um, to stay for that three year period if you're under 35 and got a British passport. Um, the only other thing that I read the other day, Darren, was that they're still going to keep the one employer for six month clause, which sounds ridiculous to me to have six different employers over three years. But do you know any more about that? No, I, I don't, Ryan. I mean, the the information coming out is very sparse and there's just there's so many different things coming out from not official um, from the Australian government. So, yeah, look. Australia's signed off on it. The UK is still waiting. I think the problem is the UK keeps changing the 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 Prime Minister every three months, so there's nothing getting done in Parliament. Yeah. So, um, yeah. but once that gets sorted, yeah, if you're 33 or 34, um, you've got a UK passport, you could head out to Australia on a three-year visa, which is fantastic. That six-month uh, working does seem ridiculous, so hopefully they'll address it and get rid of it. Yep. Question for you, Luke. Um, yep. WA. What, I, I, know, I know we're talking about getting a permanent opportunities team member over there, but um, do we have any, what what do we know about it? There's a secondary English teacher here um, yeah. who's just asking about demand over there. Yeah, so we've actually got one of um, one of the, one of my colleagues uh, actually lives in WA. Um, and although he works in, I guess, for our Melbourne branch and, and supporting our schools in Victoria, um, yeah, he, he is trying to build relationships with schools in the WA. Um, look, a little bit more, I guess, there's definitely roles there, obviously, um, and there's obviously yeah schools that um, need teachers. Um, whether they're willing to sponsor, I'm, I couldn't answer that. I'm not sh entirely sure. Uh, like if we're if we're talking about I guess other states in Australia, I know that um, South Australia is another one, so Adelaide. Um, I guess being considered a regional city, uh, we work with a couple of schools in South Australia that will yeah absolutely sponsor um but yeah outside of that um yeah w i couldn't couldn't speak to it I, I don't want to give a definitive answer and um yeah quite quote me wrong on it so i'm not entirely sure but they are looking for teachers it's just i'm not entirely sure if they, they'd be open for sponsorship but i imagine they i imagine you know all schools at the moment would be willing to have the conversation and what about just across australia pe the appetite for pe teachers yeah um i think yeah, your, your PE your PE roles, um, you know, maths and science, um, you know, design, tech, media, they're I guess they're considered well apart from maths and science, um, but yeah, your PEs and your your, your digi techs and your art they're a bit more niche these days, so it, it is hard to find PE teachers. 
Um, so yeah, they, they'd absolutely be open to those conversations, sponsorship, even through the DET initiative here in Victoria, there are PE roles, um, not as many as math and science, but yeah, when it comes to the subjects that are most in demand, your maths, your sciences and your English are up there, uh, but PE teachers are hard to come across. Um, so yeah, if um, yeah, solid educator, good CV, good references, um, yeah, conversations are willing to be had, absolutely. Fantastic. So, so do you sorry. just want to give us yeah. a quick overview? I mean, we've, we've, we've got a lot of teachers going through the um, the skilled visa, the 189. How are you yeah. finding this the skills assessment as in time frames and and the speed of, of, of people going through the system with actual live clients? Yeah, I mean, AITSL, four weeks, four to six weeks max. Um, yeah. So it's really stepped up. Um, in terms of the skilled visas, um, if they're state sponsored, I mean, I've had a few that start to finish, probably signed up around August, September time with us, did their skill assessment, um, got their state sponsorship, and they've had their visas granted within three months. Wow. Um, okay, I'll just yeah. tell everyone six months. So you, you shot me down in flames. <laughs> ah, okay. Didn't hear that. Yeah, no. I mean, I've had I've had quite a few that have wow. just taken around three or four months. Um, and with New South Wales, especially, if I've lodged EOIs nominating New South Wales for secondary school teachers, and within days I've had an invite to lodge a sponsorship. And whereas New South Wales and Victoria actually will sort of say, you know, six to 12 weeks for processing with teachers, they're, they're literally um, finalising them within days. One was finalised within 12 hours for Victoria. Wow. So even the state governments yeah. are prioritising teachers. So you've got the Australian government and the state yeah. sponsorships as well. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay. And, and the good thing with um, with the state sponsors, the state sponsorships, is that you know when you put in an EOI, you're not specialising, you're not saying um, what area of teaching they specialise in. So you're not having to say that they're a secondary school teacher um, with an English specialisation or PE. So they are sponsoring anyone. They're not looking at um science or maths they're quite happy to take any teacher if it's done okay. through a state sponsorship yeah okay that's excellent that's fantastic news thanks for that yeah are there sue and darren are there any sort of like common mistakes that people might usually make when they're applying for a skilled skilled visas that typically come up with you guys all the time they forget something or they they don't have enough knowledge in this area is there is there like a top 10 mistakes that people make that you guys could sort of share with us? Hmm. Um, work experience, Sue? Work experience. I think a lot of teachers are concerned that they don't have enough work experience. So a lot of them will, I mean, I have a teacher um, at the moment that um, her qualification is in primary education and it's, you know, 5 to 11, so it's just general primary. And yet she's worked in STEM, um, sorry, not STEM, um, SEN for the last six years. And that's obviously in its own nominated occupation group, so it's not closely related. So she can't use any of her work experience for points, even though she's got six years. So, you know, she's upset about that, but as I said to her, she will still get an invite for state sponsorship. I've got probably three or four teachers that have um, that have gone, you know, have, have lodged their EOIs and have now got their state sponsorship approval. And quite a few of them haven't got any work experience whatsoever. And they've just got the 65 points. So it's not as if they're even on 70, 80 points, which, you know, a while ago, would have been needed to even have any interest for state sponsorship. That doesn't seem to be the case now. So that's the main thing. And I think that's what a lot of teachers are concerned about. Do I have enough work experience? Um, and for the skill assessment, it's not a requirement. You don't need to have work experience to get your skills assessed by the teaching board. So, um, yeah, I think for teachers, it's it's a really good time at the moment. 
We've got um, thanks for that response. We've got a couple of questions about family sponsorship. So if Steph's asked here, she's got she's got two sets of family that live in Australia and have for over fifteen years, and she's interested about how family can sponsor another family member. Um, and and another educator here is also yeah. My brother is a citizen in Australia and a contractor. Can he sponsor me as a teacher since he works in construction? So. I don't know anything about this either, Darren. So, what is there? Is that a route at all? Like, like... yeah. So, look, um, if your occupation is on the main list, so if you're a secondary school teacher or, or an early years teacher, you can use a blood relative living in Australia in a regional area to sponsor under a skilled visa. So that's called a four nine one. So that's a five year temporary visa. But that would have the restriction of the main applicant having to live and work in a regional area for three years before getting permanent residency. So, yes, a family member can help sponsor um, if they live in a regional area for a skilled visa. If, say, for example, uh, that person's brother is living in Sydney and he owns a construction company, he can't sponsor because obviously he doesn't need a teacher and he can't sponsor because he's living in Sydney and that's not in a regional area. Yeah, and, and primary school teachers couldn't use um, a family yeah. sponsor. Yeah. Yeah, correct, because primary school teachers not on the main list. And that's also some of the confusion Sue was alerting to before with the work experience points that you claim primary school teacher and uh, secondary school early years etc on the main list are completely different unit groups so you can't can't claim the work experience and you can't uh, do family sponsorship if you're a primary school teacher okay okay um where are the regional areas i it's just another question well i guess they're, they're typically hours away from metropolitan cities right Oh, so you can answer that one. So what are the major cities that, yeah? Yeah, I mean, for instance, all of South Australia is regional, so you can live in Adelaide. Um, the big one, all of WA is yeah, regional, huge. so you can live in Perth. Um, with Victoria, you can't live in Melbourne or the metropolitan areas. Um, uh, the po but there's, you know, a whole range of postcodes. I mean, I'm not sort of too familiar with with Victoria, but certainly not um, Melbourne or the the metro area. Um, New South Wales, again, can't live in Sydney or the metropolitan area. Um, Queensland is a bit of a tricky one because they keep changing the goalposts in in Queensland, but primarily not Brisbane. Um, and all around the, I believe, the Gold Coast um is considered metropolitan but you know south australia wa those are those are great options and outside of metropolitan victoria northern territory canberra yeah yeah there's, yeah. there's heaps yeah. there's heaps forget those yeah do there's forget those of, um yeah, yeah. and tasmania you know oh, we've got tasmania that's terrible always forget about tasmania yeah i know we do but yeah, Tasmania as well. Yes. So the Australian government don't put you in the middle of the desert and say that's where you've got to teach. It's 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 pretty reasonable. You've got some fantastic areas um, and some great opportunities there. So yeah. Well, I've got time for one more question uh, before I we we sign off. But yeah, the cost of the four nine one compared to the one eight nine and one ninety. What's the the differential there? Um, go for it, sir. Yeah. Um. I mean, the cost is the same in terms of the, the visa application fees. Um, as Darren said before, it's a five year um, provisional visa. So at the end of after three years, you're as long as you've lived, worked, studied in a regional area for three years, you can then apply on shore for the 191. That's only just come in and I'm not sure. I haven't actually looked. I don't know whether you have, Darren. I'm not sure what the fees are. I think they're very um i think it's like the old 487 or yeah. um not it's sure very minimal, but the, very minimal, very minimal. Yeah. yeah so it's not something you would really put too much consideration into in terms of the fees i think it's more about um are you happy to 
to live, work and study in a regional area for three years, knowing that you don't go out initially on that full permanent visa. But, you know, if you can live in WA, then perhaps yeah. you're not going to be too concerned. No. Yep. I think um, we're going to we're going to call it now. It's just gone over an hour. Um, we have recorded this so you know everyone will have access to it um and you can relive it uh sorry for the it issues sue particularly um and i um hopefully we got the message across and answered most of your questions tonight call to action for you guys i would say would be definitely um if you want to find out more about the opportunities that anz uk can provide there's a teach au email address here at the bottom um, I'd suggest you email that and we'll make sure it gets to the right the right team member. Um, anyone that wants to have a consultation with you, Darren, what would be the best way to reach out? Yeah, sure. Just go onto our website, um, yep. visa-go.com. Um, yep. There's a form on there where you can just send an email through and um, I'll contact you and, and organise a, a consultation. Not a problem. Fantastic. All right. Well, I'd like to thank everyone for, for being part of it today, wherever you are in the world, particularly the panellists. Um, it was a, it was an education. I'm, I'm really I was really curious about it. So it was good to get an update about what's happening. It sounds like things that thing, things shift every sort of every quarter by the sounds too, Darren. So we don't know what could be happening this time next year. Um, we might have to do an updated webinar at that point. But thank you all to everyone out there as well. Thank you, Anne, for answering those questions um, via email. Appreciate that as well um and hope to hear from you soon and support that adventure of relocation to australia for you and your family your dog your cat whoever it might be but um have a wonderful day stay well stay stay healthy and we'll be in touch